for those of y'all out there who are tired of sub telling you ain't sh because you ain't getting database development, come on over to Tech G Records. What up, man? Can you hear me? Yeah, I hear you because I know you got something. What, what do you teach? <laughs> so I teach these uh, CompTIA search that you're talking about as part of my okay. uh, part of my side business that I have, man. And I think well, you're being let me say, let me say, let me say I definitely yeah. wasn't trying to sh on your on on your. <laughs> In fact, we can put the link in the chat. I'm definitely not trying to. Put, well, I, what I was I, saying was, I've talked to a lot of people that go to community college and get yeah. those certs and they can't get jobs. I'm sure you ain't just like that. I'm sure you telling them this they got to do to win. Yeah, I mean, I've, I've been doing tech for 20 years. You know what I'm saying? And I started off doing the comp to your stuff. So, I, yeah, I mean, I got a lot of experience and knowledge. And I do teach the certifications. I teach people how to pass it. I got a whole channel dedicated to that. It's called Tech G, in case y'all want to go subscribe. But, um, you know, I help people. Oh, what? Say it slowly. Say it slowly. Uh, <laughs> tech, <laughs> just, just type Tech G, T E C H G E E, Tech G. Okay. Um, but anyway, so I help people pass the certifications. Now, I think you're being slightly disingenuous just a little bit here in terms of, um, I guess, upward trajectory and mobility in tech. Like, I get it. You want people to go into database development or computer programming. Oh, hold on, G. Hold, like on G. hold on, G. Hold on, G. I'm not saying... I, I think you you would actually be the perfect you would be the authority on that shit because you have the certification. I'm just yeah. saying what well, what well, there's a difference between you who has a training that I've been doing this shit, this where you go you need this you actually give your students probably advice you tell them how to do this how to win but a guy going to a community college or some little tech boot camp over a weekend yeah. taking the test and getting the cert is probably not gonna oh yeah. No, I, I agree with you on that. You just going to take a test, pass a cert, and thinking that the world's just going to open up to you, where you're going to land these high paying jobs is probably not a reality for most people unless you know somebody that works in in the company or something like that what i do like i say i teach people how to pass the certs and um and then i also offer other stuff kind of like you where i go over their resume i teach them all this other hands-on lab stuff but all this stuff is at like a premium that i charge for obviously but um just going to take the cert studying for two weeks going to take the cert and then thinking you're going to go get a eighty thousand dollar job probably isn't going to happen now where i think you're being slightly disingenuous is i think i I heard you say something about these CompTIA certs ain't really all that per se. And I think really it depends on what you want to do in tech. Like when I educate my students or anybody asking me about tech, first thing I always ask them is what do you want to do in tech? Because that's going to dictate the path that you go down, whether you got to go load up on some CompTIA certs. Because I try to push people towards going into cybersecurity because there's like this major need for cybersecurity personnel. But in order for you to get most cybersecurity jobs, you know, it's, you're going to have to be loaded up with some type of certifications. Database development, what you teach. I don't even know if there is a cert related to that or if it is. I don't know how no, important no. it is. I mean, there are there are certifications wow. that you can get, but yeah. not like where put it like this. I can take a student mm -hmm. in six months and they can hit six, they can hit a six figure job. Whereas that's yeah. all I'm saying. I'm not saying I wouldn't dare say that everybody I know that been in been in those come to your certifications for north of five years, they can get big money. Yeah. Like, but, and like but I say, the guy, yes, the guy that I, that people what we want is speed. So a lot of times. If it ain't something they can reach in a year and a half, two years, they get frustrated and quit. Yeah. Well, I think the misconception is when it comes to these conversations, like I got 20 years doing this. You got 10, 15 years. Citizen Lou, I don't know how long he's been in tech. I'm, I think I'm when green, I'm, about, I'm like I'm around four. OK, I think when a lot of newbies listen to these conversations from people like us, they get excited about the possibility of how much money you can make. And yes, you can make a lot of money. I know plenty of people that work in cybersecurity got start off with these comp to your certs and within three to five years, they was cracking six figures. You're talking about you can get them to that level faster, which is highly possible doing database development. But I don't think people really understand the, the quote unquote levels of difficulty when it comes to this. And the reason why I'm saying this is because I've taught this stuff professionally when I was in the military for like four years. Um, my last four years in the army, I was an actual IT teacher. And so I've taught hundreds and hundreds of people and I've been able to gauge over the years to where I can almost 
point out exactly who is going to pass and who's going to fail. Who, who who was made for getting an A plus, net plus, security plus? Who was made for getting a higher level cert or going into database development or something else? Or who's just IT isn't just worth it? Uh, is it isn't the path for them because it's look, just look, look, we in lockstep. We are huh? actually in, we in lockstep because when people call me and we do the consultation, yeah. I'm, I'm very straightforward and candid. And just by yeah. anybody that's done a consultation with me, I tell you, look, man, if you ain't ready to study, if you're not ready to get it, you will fail. I tell them exactly. I say, you, you're gonna fail if you don't follow directions. If you don't record, you don't you don't record the interviews. You don't because guess what? You get if you finish, you pass my interview, and you yeah. go out there and you get you go to the interview and you refuse to record it. You are gonna fail unless yeah. once in a while somebody will get through. But a lot oh. of times I tell them record the interview so I can help mm -hmm. you. Then they go, out, I didn't get the job sub. So did you record it? Nah. Okay, we'll record the next one. Usually after about three weeks of that, they quit and give up. It's a yeah. lot of things because they don't follow directions. I, 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 just I, totally, I get my students on the first yeah. day of class. I tell them the same thing: record the interviews, make sure you follow the steps, watch the watch the videos, take the quiz, do the study, cut out the note cards, do everything I give you. I got like six things that they can do right now in my sequel that I just taught in the last month. Mm -hmm. I told them, y'all don't follow directions, you're not gonna succeed, and it won't be my fault. It'll be yours. Now, one thing I do want to clear up with this comp to your stuff, right? Because I, I always have to state this is that, like I say, when it comes back to the newbie people who don't really know anything about tech and they just want to get into tech, they're always going to get bombarded with comp to your stuff. Because what they fail to realize is this is really like A plus, net plus, security plus. I market my stuff strictly as entry level stuff, meaning this is to get your foot into the door. This is what I personally believe to be the easiest path to getting into IT. And from there, you can branch off and do all kind of do whatever the hell you want. But I also tell people, if you want to make the money, you can't just stop at these entry level certs. You're going to have to learn a whole brand new skill like database development or some type of coding, or you're going to have to get a more specialized certification, anything from a CCNA, CCNMP, or, you know, AWS. Well, yeah, Adler, I'm, I'm going to give, give you a good example. Let me, I'm going to say, I'm going to give you a good example. I think yeah. certain certifications like those cloud certifications, cloud architect. Mm -hmm. Anytime you get to an architect level on most certifications, that's where you're going to get some money. Like, see, like for example, we about to do uh, next month, we're going to do, well, not, well, technically it's June. So in mm -hmm. July, we're going to do, we're going to do Salesforce. Right. Yeah. But you go, we're going to start and by the time you get to the top of the Salesforce cert, you're talking three, 400,000 a year. But oh, yeah. I believe you got to do, you got to do about five to six different certs. You got it. It's going to take you about a year and a half to two years to get all those certs. But your first job anywhere from 70, depending on what you put on your resume, if you depending on if you got a resume, now, if you put a resume like how I do, then you might get a hundred, but you're not going to get the $200,000 with just the first Salesforce cert oh, no, you're not. as an administrator. But I think I, to me, 70,000 is good coming off the street cold turkey for about six, seven months of studying. Now, what you what you got to also educate people on, and I do this a lot, so people to hear that, ooh, $70,000, Salesforce, Salesforce certification or whatever, whatever, right? What I tell people, I'm like, like I said, I've taught this professionally when I was in the military for four years. That was my entire job. If you take 100 people and be like, all right, we're going to go learn Salesforce, we're going to go learn A+, plus, what, it doesn't matter what the damn skill set it is. Out of those 100 people, you'll be lucky if you get maybe three, the three to five people that will do everything you say and go pass on the first time go, meaning they pass the test and or they secure a job. And then you'll have upwards of like, I don't know, 45 people, they're going to fail out. They're not going to try. They thought it was cool because of the money, but then they realized, damn, I actually got to read books. I got to actually go do this. I got to do that. They're going to yeah. tap out. You yeah. know what I'm saying? And then you might have another 45 or so. They'll take their sweet time to where they'll drag the process out so long. They're going to have to start over from scratch. You know what I'm mm -hmm. saying? Yeah, so, bro. The thing bro, is, you, you know what? You tell him yeah. you tell him the story of lifting the veil. That's what yeah. you do. <laughs> I mean, because I, I deal with it. Well, my, my yeah. website is uh yeah. like I say, the YouTube channel is Tech G. The matching website is Technology G, and I'm building another LMS, a learning management. Uh, you know, you know what that is. Same thing you got to where I'm gonna have that going through. But like I say, I did this professionally, and so my thing is when we have these conversations, and w especially when we're talking to folks about it and the money you can make, what I've discovered is a lot of people get excited about the money, mm -hmm. and then that's when We'll, hope, we'll go into these whole CompTIA versus what you're teaching versus what somebody else teaches. The thing is, it doesn't matter what the hell you're learning, whether you're learning entry level search from me or you're learning some database development from sub. The reality is only about maybe five of y'all are going to actually go through and do what the hell we tell you to do and be successful with it. The majority of y'all are going to tap out. 
And I'm not saying that because I think y'all can't do it. I'm just telling you what the reality of the situation is going to be. So it doesn't matter what. Why do you? Do. Why do you think that is? I'm just going to chalk this up to a bunch of lazy. Well, I don't want to say lazy in terms of oh, you just ain't. I'm just talking about mentally lazy and people just don't want to study and read. Nobody likes studying and nobody likes reading. We live in this microwave uh, society. We run to Google. We want everything right now. You know what I'm saying? When it That's comes it. to tech and you're trying to get extremely proficient so you can make the maximum salary possible in your field or whatever the case may be, mm -hmm. you have to break those books out. And those yep. books are oftentimes five, six, seven, eight hundred, nine hundred pages long with very little pictures in them. <laughs> you yep. have to know that information. And then when you go to these job interviews, you have to know what the hell you're talking about. So yes, you can go, anybody can go in there and pass a test. But see, let me say this though, yeah. G, I, I do, I do believe that's where a person kind of benefits from brothers like us, because yeah. look, man, if I'm trying to learn about joining tables together, right? Yeah. I told my niece this the other day, she wanted me to learn a Asked, she asked a question. She didn't want to say it. And I asked her. She didn't know the answer. Right. So I said, mm -hmm. okay, let me explain it to you. I opened the screen. I showed her. I showed her in a, I went into a management studio and I showed her how to do it. I said, yeah. look, you know how long it would have took you to read a book to get just what I gave you in like five minutes? Yeah. It took, it took so, cause I always tell students, look, unmute your microphone, ask questions. If you don't, you're going to be the only other option you're going to have is either go back and listen to this live recording, mm -hmm. right? Or you're going to have to actually go. Look at the self study. You got which you can do that. I kind of made it easy. I gave them note cards, everything. But oh, I do all that too. Yeah, but the problem is if you don't do that and you open the book, now you're talking about three or four chapters of reading. It might take you an hour and a half to get it to actually get the concept. Yep. Whereas I was able because I've been doing this for X amount of years. I've been teaching. I can give you a little Venn diagram and show you this is actually what a left. When I say left join, this is really what I mean. I mean, mm -hmm. bring me all the tables from this, all the records from this one, and then matching records from that one. That's what I'm saying. We don't, a lot of times as students, I, it, it, you are right, I think it's most students. A lot of times students, when they get in these environments, they think, you know what, all I got to do is just sit here and watch the lecture, and I'm going to be proficient. I'm like, this ain't your English class where you can this sit This ain't there. Netflix. Yeah, you <laughs> look, I, look, in a lot of classes, I could sit there in school, pay attention to the teacher, right, and then just give the teacher back what they want to hear. I was, I could do that. You can't do yeah. that in tech. You cannot no, do it. Can. You can. You gotta actually do it. And so I give them labs. I tell them, "Hey guys, y'all need to meet up after class. We're not having class Thursday, man. Y'all need to meet up Thursday night, eight o'clock. Why don't y'all meet up and do this and do that?" You know, I, then when they have class, guess what I do? I hop on there and try to see if they. I was like, "Okay, all right, what's up? Let me help y'all out. What y'all trying to do?" You know, the reason I do that is because, like I said, I've tried, man. I've had classes where I beg students, man. When I first started, I would beg them not to quit. I, yeah. I, was, I, I was just like that. I would call people, man, why are you quitting? You're so close. I had people that would pass the interview process. The, I mean, take the whole class, pass my interviews, go in the interview, get get stumped in an interview and quit. Mm. I'm like, you know how close you are. Are you like, you could like, and I, I, I even play interviews. That's why I like to record interviews. I'm like, look, so-and-so went on this interview, got stumped and got a job. It happens. Every I got bad interviews of all my people that get testimonials. I got at least three or four interviews where people got their handed to them and i play them i said all these people got jobs i like to play the ones that people got jobs because i'm like this person got a job they got this shit together like literally two weeks later but i just want you to see no. that you go to interview and somebody can blindside your ass or you just won't be yeah. in the right head space because you're so worried about the money instead of focused on i'm like damn they gave you give me questions like real easy questions that i know you know the answer to yep. but you couldn't because you're so nervous and black people especially we don't know because we got this imposter syndrome. We don't know, so we get in these spaces and we think, man, I don't have the, the skills to do this. I don't have the skills, I shouldn't be here. And so these people ask you a basic question, I'm like, you know the answer. But this shit just, just blocks in your mind. I've had that happen when I first got started. I used to get on interviews, they'll ask me a question. I knew the answer, I just couldn't say it. And, it, and then the interview would be over and it should just pop in my head. I'd be like, damn, because you're nervous. Yeah. Because you're scared. You're nervous. And that shit blocks you. can't think logically. You want to think physically. And so when you get in a fearful situation, nervousness, the why in an interview, it hurts you. Because usually when you get nervous, your reaction is to the fight or flight type shit, which floods your brain. You can't think analytically a lot of times. You, you can think almost like an animal. I hate to say it's almost more of an animalistic survival instinct. That works against you in an interview. You can't. That shit, actually, you need to be able to think analytically to where it becomes almost the first thing that comes to your mind. And so it will be your instinct. But when you first learn it, it's not your instinct. They get you an interview. You know the answer. You can literally be studying a sheet of paper outside in the car. Go up mm -hmm. and remember none of that. Shit. It happened yeah. to me all the time. I had to learn it. And it, with us, 
we can't do that. A lot of us just have struggles doing that. Go ahead. Now, I, I do want to say something else. It's not just necessarily about knowing the information or not not thinking that you're smart enough to get it. What, what I really want black folks to understand when it comes to tech is that your true competition is a damn middle schooler right now, in case you guys don't realize this. And so a couple of weeks ago, I got invited to go to this IT expo where a bunch of these IT companies were out pitching whatever it is their company was doing. And they had a couple high school kids and middle school kids come out there. And some of these high school kids had brought their resumes with them, ready to apply for these companies and get job interviews straight out of high school. But there's one particular student stood out. It was a damn fifth grader, this little black female fifth grader. And she was in there talking to the president, the president of some company that was giving a little speech. She had when asked him a question. He started asking her about what she does. This little fifth grade black girl with glasses on was talking about she already knows how to code Python. And she's out here trying to build artificial intelligent robots and just all type of next level stuff to the point where the president of this company was like, yo, I'm about to send your parents, you know, Anything you want, let me let me try to help you out. So I guess the point I'm trying to make is this whole tech thing with making money and then everybody thinking it's just the white people and the Asian people. Yeah, that's true too. Because tech only with black folks is only like maybe what four percent. But your real competition is going to be coming from these damn middle schoolers and these high schoolers who are getting trained up on this crap now. You know what I'm saying? And so you guys might want to keep that in the back of your mind as you're out there. It doesn't matter what area of tech you go into. That's who you're going to be competing against, these young people who are going to outperform you. And then oftentimes they'll do the same job at a cheaper pay than what you'll do it. I mean, look, you give a kid $25 an hour in high school, he'll they have They think they're rich. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah, that's what I want my kids. I want them working at sixteen. I want them to be. Well, he, yeah, mine. He ain't got no choice. He gonna learn the code. I mean, you know what I mean? You know what I mean? I'm, I'm <laughs> teaching my son. I got my oldest son. He's uh he's about to start eleventh grade. He'll be sixteen in August. As a matter of fact, we just had this conversation in the truck earlier today. I was like, "Listen, dude, you got to take these last two school, these two years of school, very serious because we're trying to get some scholarships, and you gonna major in STEM or you gonna major in law." If if uh, college ain't in the cards for you, you're going to learn some damn tech, some IT. And because because that that's what's going to you're going to always you're going to be able to always use that in this economy. So I'm currently getting my son prepared for this world at 16. So in the event he decides for some reason college ain't for him or whatever, he can go straight out there and get to the money. Because, you know, as a young person, let's just say he gets a plus net plus security plus. He's 18 years old. He gets his first job. Making uh, look, I would have advised that if you look yeah. as much, everything you say on Kevin's from a community college. If you 16, 17, yeah. and by the time you're in the 12th grade, you coming out and you got all three of them certifications, man, please. Yeah, you'll Girl. come out. He'll come out with a job, twenty twenty five dollars an hour. His first job within about two three years, he might jump up to thirty uh, thirty dollars an hour, or something like that, maybe even faster. But because you know, I got my younger brothers. I got my youngest brother. He started off in tech when he was like twenty eight, twenty nine. He's been in tech for like eight nine years. Cybersecurity. He makes one hundred and thirty thousand dollars a year doing this crap, and he's a college dropout. You know what mm. I'm saying? So, mm. so. Mm. You know what I mean? So I got students. Man, I got. I got. I ain't gonna say. I won't put the student name out there. I got a couple of them with high school diplomas making six figures. Mm. See, what I'm saying you can make that money, bro. You look at the end of the day. I agree with everything Jeep's saying. I mean, Jeep has no choice. He's from the Tuskegee University. He has yeah, no I choice. <laughs> he has no choice. He has to be excellent, right? That's what we do, right? <laughs> but, <laughs> but yeah. like I say, I, I'm gonna tell you like this, man. Um, if you got a kid, I was always thinking like, look, man, when your kid get around six, seven grade, you on this summer, let them take um, a course at the JUCO. At, yeah. Go to a community college, enroll. By the time your child graduates, they need to have a bachelor's or a some sort of associate's diploma in mm -hmm. something that's of, of significance. Why? Because by the time that child graduates high school and gets out, they got an associate's or even if they got just one of those one year things they give, because everything ain't just associates. They got certificates you can get with like half, like like one year certificates. You can get that. And then what happens is they got the core stuff, right? Then as a parent, it's only right that like G son knows everything he knows. If you're a parent and you got a tech skill and your child get out and your child trying to go to school and they don't at least know what you know, mm -hmm. I'm, I'm going to spend that time, son. You're going to sit your ass right here. You're going to learn everything I know so that when you go in these places, you gonna we gonna do it in person. I'm gonna make oh, yeah. sure. So when you go, you already ten years in. You already got the wisdom that I had at forty some 
because I taught you. But then yep. on top of that, I, if you got time, this is my personal opinion. Why why do we think employee? Why not fund your kids' businesses with just like a mutual fund or some money sitting somewhere and some insurance policy, like a whole life? Oh, yeah, we was talking about that too. Because yeah. I, I was telling my son, I'm like, listen, dude, I, I, I'm about to try to teach you these basic skills. Because I'm like, listen, yeah, I want you to go get your first job so you know what it's like to work for somebody else. You know what I'm saying? But at the same time, well, I'm going to help you start a business. I was like, listen, we, we could just start a business fixing phones, you know, just just doing some basic computer stuff because, you know, there's, there's a gang of company, a uh, little small businesses out here that don't really have any type of IT infrastructure set up in place whatsoever. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So I'm trying to, you know, I'm pushing my son towards that. It's a little struggle because he's out here trying to, you know, chase girls and do some other bullshit. But, you know, <laughs> we're going to get them right. You know what I'm saying? So well, look, I'm going to tell you like this, man. I remember... Uh brother i had on my channel way back when i first started my channel uh interview with an it insider that's the name of it and the brother was a recruiter at the time by the name of sean and he went to tuskegee with us and he told me in that he was talking about this kid that was like had just graduated high school but his word had gotten out he was one of the best iPhone developers. He had developed apps and sold them on, on Amazon. I mean, on, on on the iTunes store, and they were rolling. And everybody got word of him. And these recruiting firms were calling, offering him a hundred to hundred and twenty five dollars an hour at eighteen years old. He just knew how to code iPhone. Yeah, that stuff is real, man. And I was like, look, you don't even have to be like at this point now. It's almost getting to the point working for a job at a company. You almost all you got to do is just prove like with Salesforce, you can go in the trailhead and get a bunch of super badges and get a bunch. Of, and then these people calling you. Yep. Hey, I see you on because they call me. I got like 30,000, 28,000 points on trailhead. And I got like I had the certification. I just lost it like last week because I just I got tired of renewing it. Right. But the point I'm making is the Salesforce certification. These people will call you. Hey, I, you know, I, I see you on. They'll look you up. They'll call you. And they'll want you to go on interviews. I still get calls from people from um these companies, and these people will be calling me all the time trying to get me to do different interviews and talk to these people in Salesforce. It's just I didn't go into Salesforce. Now, the reason I like Salesforce for a beginner is because the first certification, you ain't got to know how to code at all. All you got to do know how to do is point and click, drag and drop. And then it's just all explaining the platform, the environment. You talking about, you talking about Salesforce? Yeah, the administrator cert. Once you okay, get that okay. first cert, it's just ex understanding the environment and understanding the platform and how it works. That's it. And it's just point and click, drag and drop. Once mm -hmm. you know that, you get that first cert, you, that's enough right there to make some real money. Just that one certification probably take you about two months. It's going to take us about two two to three months. I don't know how long. I'm going to let him talk about how he gonna, how long he's going to take. But Hey, sub. I'm about, I'm about to drop down, man. All right, bro. Uh, All right, I, I just want to say one more thing, man. All right. Uh, for those of y'all out there who are tired of sub telling you ain't shit, because you ain't getting database development. Come on over to Tech G Records, baby. <laughs> <laughs> we'll get you out right of this Hey, I'm all in the video <laughs> dancing. <laughs> hey, they, hey, they, they, that might that might have went over their head, dog. That might have. Hey, oh, yeah. uh, that's that's ninety five. That's Source Award ninety five. That might have went over their head right there, dog. <laughs> all right, bro. I'm gonna holler at you later, man. All right, man. Take care, bro.